testing okay welcome to uh cs 4510 uh 5-1 this is one quick lecture i think i can do this in one take today i'm going to prove to you two things first i'm going to prove to you well second i'll actually i'll prove to you that uh, every context-free language can be decided by a uh push down automata this construction is actually quite easy but we have still building up to do first Every transition in a PDA, uh, it's something like sigma, uh, gamma goes to gamma, right? But would you believe that every transition could also be sigma, gamma goes to gamma star? Why? Well, what I'm going to do is prove that if a DF, if excuse me, if a PDA has transitions like this, it's equivalent to like a normally defined PDA. So consider, consider we have a transition of the form A, uh, B, and then we push uh, C1 through Cn, right, in one transition. I claim that we could. This is just equivalent to. Uh, we ca ca keep the same, so we read A from the input, read B from the top of the stack, and then push uh, C1. Then we read nothing, read nothing, push C, uh, C2. And so on. Read nothing, uh, read nothing, push Cn. Here's the catch, though. Uh, the stack, uh, will have the reverse, uh, Cn to Cn minus, excuse me, C1. Why? Because we pushed them in the opposite order. The last thing we pushed was Cn, so the top of the stack will be Cn. If then we pop that, last thing we pushed before that was Cn minus 1. So, we really should, like, if we want to push a string, we have to write the reverse of it, Right? So now I'm going to explain how we construct, uh, we construct, uh, PDA, uh, P for each, uh, CFG, G. Basically, uh, you know, suppose that the start state of G produces some string X, uh, we want uh, want p to accept x, right? So what p is going to do is put the start state on its stack and then just produce uh, produce x. And if it checks that the stack is then equal to its input, it accepts. But uh, uh, which productions does it choose? All of them. <laughs> uh, that was a uh, not very funny, but we just sort of non-deterministically uh, say yeah. You know, like the joke I made in the first non-determinism lecture. If you come to, a, if, if Robert Frost comes to a fork, fork in the road, he can just take it. He doesn't have to choose one or the other. He just takes the fork, right? So what will happen end up end up happening is that. A push on automata will produce all kinds of strings with branches that reject, but there will be one branch which will happen to accept correctly. So it's going to accept. So uh, the idea is uh, P starts uh, with S on the stack. Uh, and produces X and then checks, uh, produces, uh, produces Y, and we say accepts if input equals stack. Well, so as we produce, we can't keep that whole thing on the stack because 
we're going to have like uh, stuff in the middle, right? Let's say we have like the stack contains like 0s1 or something. This s is going to be in the middle. We can only read the top of the stack. So we would have to like pop this off, read the s, but then we've lost memory of this 0. Right? We could keep some finite memory, but we can't do it for arbitrarily large uh, prefixes before the first non-terminal. So we have to somehow think of something smart. So the idea is we're actually just going to pop every non every terminal we see off the stack and then just match those into the input. And then so we're sort of like tricking the input into keeping a little bit of memory for us, if that makes sense. Right. So here's the algorithm. Here's the experiment. Push uh, uh, the stack canary. Uh, then push the start symbol. Uh, while uh, true, I'll do caps because I'm a Pythonic guy. Uh, if top of stack is a non terminal, uh, pop it. Then uh, push its production. Uh, if top, I could say else if, but if top of a stack is terminal, if uh, matches a read from input, so we read in the input, and uh, that means we advance in the input, we can't go backwards. Uh, then we pop it, and then we continue. Well, I'll just say we pop it. We already, already said uh, that we pop, uh, continue in the input. So I'll say else reject. And then finally, uh, if uh, top is we're out of stack, just accept. That's the accepting branch. Whoa, wow. So this seems a lot harder than it actually is. The actual uh, thing we're going to do only has three states, okay? So consider G. For here's the PDA for any grammar. Uh, we have three states. So we have, I'll do circles even. Three states for any grammar, by the way. That's like really powerful, isn't it? The first transition is going to just push, uh, read nothing from the input, pop prompting nothing, nothing to the stack, and then push uh, the canary and then the start symbol. Recall that this is the reverse. So this, we have to reverse the string when we write it like this. If we read the input right now we will read s we will not read the canary we won't read the end we read the beginning then we do a self loop here which is really like a billion self loops uh and uh if so let's say if a produces w in g then we add the rule a uh, then we add the rule to the self loop, uh, read nothing from the input, pop A off the stack, and push WR. If we, uh, and then for all A in uh, every terminal, we add the rule, uh, match it in the input, and then pop it off. And then we just immediately go to an accept state if we see this canary. That's it. So, yeah. That seems like almost like too easy, right? And you know what? You're, you're right. It actually is kind of too easy. So let's just do uh, several examples. Let's do S goes to uh, 0S1 or Epsilon. That's it. So... What I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw my three states again. Uh, 
I'm actually going to draw this one twice. So, this is the start state. Oh yeah, by the way, that's the start state, obviously. I'm going to have my push the uh, things that I need to push, which is my start state and my uh, stack canary. Then we have S goes to 0, S1 as a rule. Right. So, we add the loop. Uh, read nothing from the input. Pop S off the stack and push 1, S0. Right. Then I'm going to, uh, for each non-terminal, I'm going to have, and which is just 0 and 1, we're going to match a 0 in the input, 0 on the top of the stack, and then just pop it. 0, 0, so on. Right. Uh, and then I need one more. I need to get rid of this epsilon rule. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, read nothing in the input, C, Eps, S, and then um, push Epsilon. Right? Then I'm just going to accept. This is going to be... This is technically four transitions, by the way, in one loop. It's like looks really messy, but you, uh, you guys can understand, hopefully. Then I'm going to accept if I see the canary. So, that looks... Uh, Actually, you know what? The equivalent uh, PDA we did for this has three states. Excuse me, had four states. This somehow has three states, right? It's like, wow, you wouldn't expect a conversion like this to use even less states, but it somehow it did. Let's do a view of execution of this. Uh, I'll do two things. One, I'll say I'll, I'll convert this transition to if it would look like normal. So I'll do that first. What I should have, what I could have done not should have, but, you know, what I could have done is say, okay, state, uh, we'll do it like this. S uh, state, uh, state. Right. So what I could have said is, uh, read nothing from the input, see eps, see a non-term of the stop, the start of the stack and then push the one. Then read nothing, read nothing, push the S, read nothing, read nothing, and push the uh, zero. And then I could get rid of that. So these three, the sort of three cycle would be equivalent to that. It looks really bad actually, it's really messy now, but you guys get the idea. Okay, let's do a simulation of this. Let's just, Let's run this PDA on uh, uh, 0011, right? So we're going to start with 0011 in the input, and we're going to start with an empty stack. Fair. Next thing I'm doing is I'm pushing the stack canary and pushing the start symbol. I'm reading nothing. So we're starting 0011. We're still in the input, and I'm going to push uh, the canary and push the start symbol. Now, I'm at this state. This is, this is by the way, we're calling this Q loop. That's just what Sipser calls it. This is like Q start, Q final, or Q acceptor, whatever, you know. Doesn't matter. So now that I'm at Q loop, I'm going to, uh, if I see an S at the top of the stack, oh, good thing I do. I'm going to, there's many branches I could do here, by the way, but I'm going to non-deterministically choose the right one. I'm going to pop S off the stack and push 1S0. So what that means is, while still reading nothing in from the input, so what that means is I'm going to go to, I'll write it here, 0, 0, 1, 1. Nothing is still read in the input. S has been popped off, and we pushed uh, 1, S, 0. So the top of the stack is going to look like 0, S, 1, uh, canary. Right. Now, while um, the top of the stack is a uh, terminal, just pop it and match it to the input, right? This 0 is the same as this 0. Oh, oops. It should be one. So I see a zero, I see a zero, I advance and I pop. Now 
this what we've seen here before is kind of like keeping track of everything before the first uh, non-terminal sort of we've just sort of as soon as we've matched it we can sort of forget it about it and then we don't have to keep track of it anymore uh, something else to note is this is really like a leftmost derivation, right? Because we're taking the leftmost uh, non-terminal in the working string. So, okay, now I see a non-terminal at the top of the stack. So I'm going to do what? Of course, I'm going to push 0s1 again. So I'm going to pop it off and push 0s1. So, well, really 1 is 0, but the top will be 0s1. So the input is unchanged. The top of the stack is popped, and then I put 0s1, 1. Now the input matches the top of the stack. 0, 0, 1, 1, switch to state 1, and we pop it. So this gives us S11 one, one, canary, should be a canary here, right? OK, now we have a non-terminal. So what do we do? I could choose to. Uh, produce it some more, but I already know that that non-deterministic path will reject. I'm trying to just demonstrate that there is one path we'll accept. So I'm going to choose now the popping and don't push anything while reading nothing from the input. So 0, 0, 1, 1. Don't read anything from the input. Now we have 1, 1 uh, canary. Right? We just pop S. We take this rule here. Now uh... While the top of the stack contains terminals, we pop. And they as long as they match the input. So this is going to go to 0, 0, 1, 1, move forward in the input, pop the top, which is going to give us one canary. And we do it again. 0, 0, 1, 1, uh, end of the input, canary. Now, while we hit the canary, anytime we hit the canary, we just accept. So... We're out of stack and we're out of input. So we accept. Uh, it's much less easy to, to design uh, a, a automata, push an automata this way, than it is to just sort of think about it manually, in my opinion. But this is how you do it. This is how you construct an automata, uh, a, a CFG for, excuse me, how you construct a PDA for each CFG. So each. I could give more examples, but I'm sure you understand. So each uh, CFG has a PDA such that uh, the language of G is equal to the language of the PDA. So PDA P is a CFG G. Therefore, the, every context-free language is a uh, language decided by a pushdown automata. And then from the previous section, we already proved the other way, which was much harder, by the way. You can already tell, even time-wise, how much harder that was. We already proved that the language is, we converted each PDA into a grammar, context-free grammar. Right? Together, these imply that the PDAs decide exactly those languages which are context-free. There is no other language. Wow! Okay, I'm going to do two more uh, examples. Let's do even length palindromes. Which has grammar. Let's see if you remember. It's going to go S. Goes to 0S1. Nope. Nope. 0S0. Zero 1S1. Or epsilon. Right? So what are our states again? Start state, uh, the, the looping state, and the accept state. And I'm just going to draw it like this very briefly. Accept, start. So see nothing in input, see nothing in stack, and then push the canary and the start symbol. Uh, see nothing in input, pop this canary, and go to the accept state with pop push anything. So what I'm going to do then is we have one, two, three rules. So I'm just going to go like... Like that. So if I see nothing in the input, but I see an S at the top of the stack, I'm going to pop it and push uh, 0, S0. If I see nothing in the input and see an S at the top of the stack, I'm going to pop it and push 1, S1. 
if I see nothing in the input and I see an S at the top of the stack, I'm going to push epsilon, push nothing. If I see a zero of the input and I see a zero at the top of the stack, I'm going to pop it. If I see one in the input and I see one at the top of the stack, I'm going to pop it. That's it. That was everything. Uh, yeah, now let's do uh, something slightly more complicated. Maybe something that has more than one term, more than one uh, non-terminal. So let's do like uh, A to the N, B to the M, C to the N, such so N comma N, written equal to zero. You guys remember what this grammar looks like? It's going to be like S goes to A, S, C, or B, or Epsilon, and then B goes to um, little b, b, or epsilon. Right. So this is necessary because the empty string is is valid to be produced. So I'm drawing my three states. Let me give myself plenty of room. Now this is going to have a lot more rules, but read nothing from the input, read nothing from the stack, push the canary and the start symbol. Read nothing from the input, pop the canary, and push nothing. Uh, I'm just going to write the rules first. So if I see an S, if I see nothing in the input, and I see an S at the top of the stack, push uh, CSA, right? If I see nothing in the input, and I see an S at the top of the stack, push B. If I see nothing in the input, I see an S at the top of the stack, push B nothing. If I see nothing in the input and I see a B at the top of the stack, push a uh, little B like that. If I see nothing in the input, now this would also have been just as valid, by the way, if I did B, B, right? This would produce exactly the same. Uh, but the execution might look different on the PDA. So there's just a quick quick example of two PDAs which would have different executions on the same string therefore be different PDAs but they would uh, recognize the same language decide the same language right so then I'm gonna continuing with CB I'm gonna push epsilon now uh, I'm just gonna add my loop this is the start state this is the accept state 